Hello, I'm the Angry Spork, taking issue with Sabretooth, Death Aunt. The story started with the villainous title character being attacked by ninjas, then betrayed by his psychic sidekick, Birdie. After being augmented by the mysterious Tribune, he's tasked with killing Mystique within two days, or a bomb inside his chest will detonate. And you thought you got nasty hop on. Issue 2's cover sees Sabretooth pouncing on Mystique, the latter of whom looks like she's already had a bit too much of that there champagne. On a mission of death, a past life is found. Turns out Victor is the reincarnation of a squirrel. No one ever lets him live that down. Well, maybe Squirrel Girl. Anyhow, he busts down his front door, a little more understandable than the door he broke in Issue 1, but... Still, if you like any kind of security, you'll have to pay for a replacement, dude. So he's looking for his betrayer, announcing his encounter with the Tribune. Did he pay ya in Roman coins? Thirty pieces of silver? I know that's probably more of a reference to a famous act of betrayal, but it kind of second-hand compares Sabretooth to Jesus Christ. And that's just plain stupid. Vic finds that Birdie is up and left, though not entirely as he pokes out a window, sees her about to take off in his best ride, and in the next panel is instantly on the ground to have a chat. Why did she stick around? The operation apparently took a week, and she's just now getting out of Canadian Dodge? What, did... Did she need to decompress in the hot tub for a couple of days before remembering, Oh yeah, I turned traitor on a savage murderer! However, she is smart enough to know that Sabretooth only has meaningful discourse with his impending victims and drives off. Give or take a car door. Creed heads to his garage full of cars to find all the tires slashed. Emphasis on slashed. No, really, it's in big, bold red letters and everything. And for a claw user like Vic, that must be extra insulting. But there is one little thing the telepath didn't know about. A motorcycle kept hidden behind the wall. Huh, you'd think he'd want easier access to it for things like cleaning and maintenance, but I'm no grease monkey, so what do I know? He gives chase on the road, even snapping at someone mouthing off at Birdie right before going back to threatening her. However, they come to an incomplete bridge, so Birdie turns around and runs Creed over. She barely has time to wonder where the body went when he bursts out from underneath the car like a hairy xenomorph. She threatens to shoot him, but he just smacks the gun away, sending them over the rail. That's distracted driving for you. Creed tells her to do it, and she replies by asking now with the intense incredulity of four question marks. Um, smile, you're on candid camera. No, she just used her powers to enter his mind where their perception of time is warped and Kid Creed is choking her again. They're in the memory of Creed taking Tribune's job. Same scene as the end of issue one, same dialogue, but different angles. However, it's expanded upon, with Tribune asking how Creed intends to kill him after Mystique, since the robot-looking boss man's identity and location are both unknown, and they'll just knock him out and leave him outside his home when they're done. He then calls a woman to cancel the rest of the day's appointments, who does so, and we are returned to the car, inexplicably landing with little problem and driving on. Vic mentions that he feels better now and might actually regret it if he ever did kill Bertie. For a couple of minutes, anyway. I keep trying to come up with a job security joke to make, but with these two being so comically bizarre, I got nothing. Pun not intended this time. Elsewhere, Tribune is relaxing after a drink and a cigar in his suit, but not his helmet, confirmed that his people have completed a task at Tooth's Seattle mansion. Seriously, how many mansions does this guy have? His assistant, Ellie, tells him they have the latest surveillance and background reports on Mystique. Furthermore, any loose threads that could be traced back to Shadow Bob Iron Pants have been severed. And given that underlaying, that probably means murder was involved. Arriving at his Seattle home, Creed finds the name Paris spray-painted on the wall, 
the location of his intended victim. He doesn't know if it's true that she's currently one of the X-Men, certainly possible a lot of villains have joined their ranks over the years, and tells Bertie to get them a flight to the French city, not intending to kill her anytime soon. That ninja trying to sneak up on him, not so lucky. Yeah, this is all kinds of confusing. Why did they drive all the way to Seattle in the first place? And how isn't there some kind of border security that would find a seven-foot man yeti driving shotgun in a beat-up sports car just a wee bit suspicious? Wouldn't it have made more sense for Tribune to contact Creed with the information when it was available? In the City of Lights, Mystique is on the phone, a phone we don't really see, arranging a meet with someone, then morphing into a dark-haired, light-skinned woman. She muses to herself about how she once worried about losing her identity, but says that as a shapeshifter, her real self isn't the blue weirdo, but whatever she wants in a given moment. Like one moment, she's wearing a robe and a necklace, and the next, she's in lingerie. Well, that was kind of weird. Maybe I'm more used to the more prideful Raven Darkholm that wasn't ashamed or passive about her mutant powers. Or maybe the dialogue was just a clunky way of expositing her powers in a short amount of time. Sabretooth does the old rooftop jog while Bertie follows on the ground, who tells him they've reached the building where Mystique is staying, down to the room. Did they somehow get all that information from the spray paint? Well, however they found out, Victor crashes through her window and has her by the throat, but recognizes a scent and is splashed with Martel Vesoup. However that's pronounced. He doesn't seem to mind until Mystique flicks on a lighter. One made in the USA. Red hair, white clothes, blue skin. Makes sense she'd buy American. Then sets her attacker on fire and escapes. After the flames die out, Creed heads to ground level where Birdie points him towards the metro. In the subway, Raven is running and shape-shifting as she boards a train, briefly changed into a nun until Vic sniffs her out in her guise as... Homeless Ron Funches before his weight loss? He's already locked on to her familiar natural scent, and as he bursts into an otherwise empty car, she morphs into Creed's mom beginning a flashback to when his dad tried to kill him with an axe in lieu of being more careful while keeping him chained up forever. And take a look at the shape of the axe. Wait a minute. Huh. Well, that just made a lot more sense. I mean, those arms are beefier, so they might not be his dad's and are something more symbolic. But still... Despite the bites she received in the previous issue, the woman is determined to save their boy, though Pa stops her from finishing that parental claim, and she shields the child as the axe falls and Sabretooth roars back to the present. The train has stopped and Mystique is back on the move, having intentionally opened the old wound, not feeling sorry for it at all, as Creed demands to know how she knew about his childhood. She takes an elevator up the Eiffel Tower, and tells the killer, who's climbing up the old-fashioned way, that he told her himself a long time ago in Berlin, before the secret program put blocks in his mind. If Vic wants to continue the conversation, he can do so with her dinner date, a fellow member of the same program, Wolverine. Aw, oh, look at that, he brought flowers. Then we have another Sabretooth pinup, but it looks like he's preparing himself for his version of tickle torture which would just be plain torture in this case. Well, so far, the pace has been kept up pretty well. I didn't feel particularly bored reading it, though there is a hiccup of crossing international borders for no explained reason. And more like Tribune somehow knowing his reluctant employee would head to Seattle and how they knew the exact room Mystique was staying in. The art isn't any better or worse, but leaves a lot of detail out in favor of darkness and shadow. Next week, we see if Wolvie and Creed can get through the appetizers without killing each other.